Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and welcome to episode 100 of Hermitcraft. We are here, one eye on Red Sky Bay, one eye on Castle Ravenloft. You can't actually see the bay. Now you can. That is the magic of movement. Now, one of the things that makes games great is your ability to move. So, for that reason, I got some gunpowder and this Elytra, and I am ready to do a little bit of flying around today, just a little bit retrospectively, you know? It's funny, because, like, I built this uh, whole Red Sky Bay Visitor Center thing here to be kind of like a workshop where I could test ideas out. I have barely used it for any of those. And, you know, not that I'm about to spend all day today making up ideas inside of there as a workshop, but, you know, it's... If you guys have ideas that you think I should workshop inside that workshop, that JOLO deck, if you will, definitely let me know. I would love to entertain them. Also, I'd really like to actually make the Visitor Center entrance here actually better. Oh look, it's my temporary shelter from episode 4. This has been, like at this point, I was I was going to tear this down. This was going to be gone. And it's still here, and it's actually still providing me temporary shelter. What do I need? I need some paper and some gunpowder to make fireworks. It is providing. And for that, I'm grateful, you know? It's funny how you set something up and you're like, yeah, this is good enough. And then maybe it's more than good enough. It's good enough to last. But anyway, I was planning on tearing this down eventually one day. Whoa, or just falling backwards in the sand. That's always fun. But now I'm thinking, like, it would be kind of better if I just had a stairwell that came up out of here into the workshop and made that a permanent thing. Like, now that does kind of alleviate the ability to use this as a constrained workshop environment, or abbreviate maybe, less than alleviate, more more abbreviate, um, but uh, you know, and it'll require destroying this sign, whoops, sign's gone, well luckily false thanked me a long time ago, so I, I don't need to constantly have that reaffirmed, we can just drop these extra signs with our extra eggs here, unfortunately there's no hidden secret fireworks, but you know, it's okay. Let's go ahead and climb up here a little bit. I always loved how this ceiling came together. Although it never actually came together all the way. Or the same thing with that wall. I've been using that to fly into occasionally. Because when you fly into a wall, you actually want to fly into a lack of a wall. That wall has more value by not being there than by being there. And sometimes... I don't know. Sometimes relationships are like that. Sometimes you, you hold something too close, you squish it. So you gotta give things room, give people space, that sort of thing. I don't know. Um, so yeah, from up here, look, there's another sign. I didn't set these signs up. Oh, stream starting soon. That's from when I stream. Maybe I'll do that again someday. Let's see. We've got our little house here that we started working on a long time ago. I still haven't gotten the garden in. I was going to build a little garden in this valley here. And instead, it's just a little valley of darkness where monsters can spawn and attack people at night. So, you know, that's nice in its own way. But look at what 100 episodes have accomplished. Part of a basement. A chest with some ender pearls. I actually taken some of those on my way up the stairs. No fireworks in there. But it would have been nice if there were. You know, I, I kind of thought like, okay, I just want to experiment with a house. I want to have a place that I can put a bed where mobs won't spawn and attack me. So I made this. But really, I'm bad at making houses that are useful in Hermitcraft in a way that is meaningful, above and beyond, like the core concept of a base. So there's that, too. I need to reevaluate how I process these sorts of things. But I have been really pleased with, on the whole how I've been able to preserve the overall landscape of the bay. Like, I didn't come in here and terraform away all of it, you know? I started putting some poles in for a dock, but I didn't pave the whole thing over and put up a parking lot, you know? Um, a lot of these parts of this are still unlit, which I like. I hope that when the server shuts down one day, which, you know, no time soon, hopefully not until next Halloween, after next Halloween. But anyway, you know, when the server shuts down, I hope that some of this natural, algorithmically rendered beauty is still here. You know, 
a lot of times I look at some of the stuff I build and I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, and and maybe I wasn't thinking. Maybe that's why I play Minecraft, just to let my mind, um, what do you call it, uh, disengage. Yeah. Speaking of disengagement, there's a movie screen. You know, I could uh, put movies on there, which is one way to disengage. But it's not as good as creating things, I think. So, I gotta say, I did love this pig prank. That was a good project. So thank you, Cub, again, for contributing with that. We can climb up to the tippy top of our pig from the, uh... I think we have an entrance in one of its tippy toes. No. No, they're not called tippy toes. They're called little piggies. Yeah, so we go in through this little piggy. And then... Yeah. This was another... This was our, uh... Poor kind, poor sign visitor center. This is where the pigs come visit. Interesting laddering setup I did there. But yeah, I really love how these skylights work. This space doesn't really get used as much as it could, unfortunately. But you know, looking back, that's just kind of how things are. Sometimes you make things and uh, they don't end up exactly the way you planned. Hey, but we did capture that zombie pig man. He's still there months later. So, that is just one thing. The back bacon is a very viable name for this, suggested by, I believe, one of my viewers, Lethal217, back in the day. Or maybe that was a repeat of somebody else's suggestion. If so, apologies to the original Suggestrix. We have... Gotta check this. Any, uh... No, no fireworks. Well, anyway. Let's go ahead and eat a potato. A potato, because it's, it's potato by the bay. Boom. But yeah, let's uh, fly. You know, we've got... I picked this area partially because it, it, it's so nice in terms of its natural borders. Like, I could say, hey, anything immediately around the bay, don't build there. That'll be my thing. So, you know, we come over here, though. What's this? Somebody has built... Flying something. I'm guessing a sheep. I think we're in ZF or Tango's area. I think Tango's area is actually further that way. Let's go ahead. Whoa, there are sheep down here. Yeah, so this must be where their aerial delivery service launches out of. That was fun when they brought us some by the other day. Let's go ahead. Let's hop out of here. I'm thinking that this over here, that this is Tango's area. It, I mean, I'm not really flying to these places because I'm like, oh, I built this, this is part of my memories. But, you know, like, looking at what people accomplish on the server in 100 episodes, it's pretty crazy. I mean, this was 100 of my episodes. I don't know how many Tango and ZF and all spent. But, oh, this looks so cool. What is that, somebody fighting? Oh, no, that's a weird cemetery, I think. Tango Tech Cemetery. Interesting. But anyway, we are mostly passing through here on our way to the spawn area. I wanted to take a look at kind of how that's changed a little bit. Assuming that I don't run out of these uh, magical flying pistol things. Oh, yeah, there's uh, Isuma's illegal house, which somebody was supposed to take down. Wink. I say Isuma was supposed to take that down, like jokingly. I think, actually, if, if nobody took down stuff, it was supposed to be my job to be the meanie that was going to destroy it all. See, like, I don't know what this is, but I think I'm supposed to be mean about it. What is this? Yeah, this is unacceptable. Let's let's tear it out. Actually, let's not, because I actually don't know what it is. Let's, yeah, let's not tear it out. Let's give people the benefit of the doubt for the time being. But, anyway. I do want to still play the meanie and knock down all the extra buildings around here, when, when uh, if there's anything left. I guess Asuma's build there is considered a little bit out of the uh, radius of things that must all be destroyed forever. But, yeah, this uh, this was a fertile valley. And we built it up and we tore it down. And, whoa, what is that? That's persistent. Anything that persists is a potential target. This anvil reached orbit. October, well, somebody clearly built this on October 3rd, 2017, or after, so we'll leave that there. But, anyway, 
let's go ahead and run downstairs and take a look just around the tree. See how that's been going. So we can just take a quick jump out of here. Can I pull up, pull up, pull up? Whoa, perfect landing. Tabletop premium experience from Joe Hills. That is what I deliver. I claim to deliver it, and it has occurred. This is good. Oh, did Scar put in some new trees? I really like that. That is, that is great. Like, none of this was here. This was a pit. You can go back and watch the episodes where we sat and talked about digging it out. I don't know. I feel like, I just, it makes me happy. It makes me happy to look at this and go, you know, we had 100 episodes, or I've had 100 episodes on this server, and I feel like I've contributed in a little way. I helped dig out part of this. I helped build the Yesh building. Um, I've got this bookshelf here if somebody wants to look at bookshelves, although my shop is still technically listed as coming soon. Who's my neighbor here? Impulses gear up. <gasps> Beacon rental? I might want to rent a beacon. <gasps> Look at how many beacons there are. That's insane. That's that's a lot of beacons. I'm I'm like I know that this is supposed to be like a post scarcity environment once you restart the server, but I'm literally tripping over my own words, unable to process this. This. Look at this. That's too many beacons. That's exceptional. I'm. Probably gonna borrow those at some point for my castle build. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go look at the castle today because I feel like I've been looking at that plenty, but wow, I just gotta say, huge fan of everybody on the server. Nothing but nice things to say about them. Just gonna go ahead and end a pearl back up to there. Let's go ahead and walk around here a little bit and see some of the other builds that have gone in. Like, it's not really a formal server tour, because I'm not formally doing anything. I'm just making things up as I go, and going around where people make. So, you know, that's nice. Oh, man. I love these natural pathways. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's just nice to have a moment to reflect, like, on what people can do when they coordinate, when they work together, when they bring together different skill sets. It's, it makes me happy. I'm, Hermitcraft makes me happy is, I think, going to be the title of this episode. You know, and I hope it makes you happy, too. Please uh, go ahead and put in the comments, you know, what makes you happy from these first hundred episodes? What makes you happy about Hermitcraft? I would love to hear it. It is always so encouraging to hear from you guys. Um, Y'all are pretty awesome. And there wouldn't be a Hermitcraft, really, if it weren't for the fans. So, that is definitely something you guys can be proud of. You contributed. You know, actually, a lot of the ideas I get, like, uh, related to how I execute the builds and things like that, that comes from you, the commenters. So, folks, you guys are awesome. I think that we're going to make one last stop at the Mooshroom game, which uh, I think I can find through the nether. But this might be a little bit of a misadventure because I've never actually gotten to the gaming area from the nether portal. I always take a boat, but I didn't bring a boat with me. And so I think we are going to try that now and possibly starve to death if that's a bad idea. Time skip. So here we are in the gaming district. There's a bed if you want to turn night into day. I don't know why someone would. Nighttime is so soothing. Oh, there's so much dirt here. I'm gonna have to keep that in mind if I ever need any dirt. But yes, it does indeed appear that our cattle game is still here. Basically, I just wanted an excuse to uh, harvest leather without people, um, you know, getting mad at me for building a farm when there's no farming area on the server. And no farms, especially in the gaming district. Hey, I didn't starve to death on my way here, and now I got food. This is like the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, also, don't try to eat when you're clicking on... <gasps> That's how they get out. Whoa, it looks like there's even more cattle in here than there were when I used to play. That's actually really nice. So, yeah, anyway, this thing has been a huge success. I don't know if anyone has actually ever played it. 
because the scoring mechanism is incredibly silly. But you know what? It works. I am... I am happy. So, you know what? That's... Hermitcraft makes me happy. Look, there's a zombie. Hello, zombie. How did you even get here? You must have wandered in from, like, another biome. That was a poor idea. You should have stayed where you were. Safe. And dead. Now you're damaged and dead. That's a worse way to be a zombie, I think, in my opinion. But yeah, I mean, here we are. We visited stuff from episode 1. Well, maybe not 1. Episode 18, episode 4. All sorts of places in between. Hermitcraft makes me happy. I hope it makes you happy, too. Here is to 100 more episodes. Until next time, y'all. This is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.